I raised my sister from the time she was eight years old until she passed away from primary liver cancer at 15. On May 16th, 2001, I came home from work and found her curled up in a fetal position on the floor in pain. And she just kept clutching her right side and saying she couldn't breathe. And the day before, she had been absolutely fine. We went to see her pediatrician. He pressed her abdomen and lifted up her shirt a little and saw that her abdomen was distended. And he asked how long her stomach had looked that way. And she said just a few days but she had not felt any pain until that day. And he became very concerned and he said, I want you to go to ER, you need a test. And this whole time she was in incredible pain. She goes to get the CAT scan and as she's being wheeled in, and she had a very dry, witty sense of humor and she said, hey sissy, watch it be cancer. And I laughed and I said, bite your tongue. And then an ER doctor comes in, and I'll never forget because he didn't look at her, and he wouldn't say her name. And he just looked at me, and he said, she has tumors in her liver and lungs, and we're not equipped to handle this situation. I've ordered an ambulance for you to go to Children's Hospital, and I'm sorry. And he walked out. So, in six hours, our lives were turned completely upside down, just like that, six hours. We both burst into tears, and then she said, I was just joking. I said, what are you talking about? She said, I was just joking when I said, watch it be cancer, and, and so I started laughing. That night, we were at Children's Hospital, Los Angeles. They did a biopsy. The doctor came out of the biopsy and said that she had primary liver cancer. She had chronic hepatitis B and hepatitis C, which they determined she got during childbirth. A week later, she had her first round of chemo. She had blue hair at the time. Blue was her favorite color. So she cut off all her hair beforehand and cut it into four mohawks, which she called her quadhawk. She took a turn for the worse right at the very, very, very end, very suddenly. And I was having to make an incredibly hard decision at four o'clock in the morning, no sleep. In my mind, I had to go back to what Adrian wanted, what I intuitively knew she would want and I knew she was not ready to go, and certainly not in the hospital. And so I got her home, and she passed away at home, in her bed, peacefully, not in pain, two and a half days later, on October 9th in the evening, just surrounded by people who loved her. From the time she felt pain, which was May 16th, until the day she passed away, which was October 9th, she was sick 147 days. So it was very, very, very fast.